The air was thick with sentimentality inside Great American Ballpark and outside around the statue of the old left-hander, his departed and beloved radio partner. Kim Nuxall, son of the legendary Joe, hey, was in the booth from the get-go. 19 years old, Tampa, Florida. I remember to this day, he was following Al Michaels, you know. Uh, it was his very first game at Al Lopez Field. And the microphone hits, and he says, welcome to Al Michaels Field. You probably heard him tell that story. But yeah. Summer always had a reassuring sense to it when the voices of Marty and Joe emanated from kitchen windows, car radios, backyards, front stoops. That ball had some serious line drive on it. Voices that were a part of the region's DNA, its identity. The thing that meant the most to Dad, and I'm sure Marty too, is the letters they were received from people who could not get out. You know, they were... Uh, blind, for instance, that's that's one of the ones that I know that stand out for Dad, where they were their eyes to the ball game. As the Marty party started and his microphone moved towards a final September silence after 46 seasons, fans here in the city where baseball began, for them this was one of those markers of a lifetime, a day with its own unique and special substance. There was nowhere else on earth Joe Nuxall's son was going to be on this sweet and sentimental September afternoon. Right? Oh gosh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I got to shag fly balls when I was a little kid uh, with uh, Wally Post and Frank Robinson, and you know, then I get to go up in the booth afterwards. It's, it's humbling. It, it really is. And a week from Saturday at the Miracle League, Kim Nuxall will open a fully accessible, wheelchair accessible miniature golf course for his all-star kids there, 1230 October 5th, and there to dedicate it, the recently retired Marty Brown. Live at Great American, John London, WLWT News 5.